Hi, I'm Elizabeth Ostling, Associate Principal Flute of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Thinking of everyone in Boston and the surrounding communities right now, wishing you all health, safety, financial security. And right now, while we're not playing concerts, I am staying musically fit by playing just one hour every day. I was on sabbatical several years ago getting a master's degree from Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary in spiritual formation. And I lived on campus for a year and I just practiced in the chapel for one hour every morning. And then I found out that when I had to come back and um, perform recitals and ramp up for uh, Spring Pops and then Tanglewood, uh, I was able to do so very quickly. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm carrying that on and I'm playing one hour a day. And I start out by using this six liter breathing bag that uh, it's a medical supply. You can actually get it on Amazon like everything else. <laughs> um, so I do some exercises on that that I learned from Keith Underwood. He's a fantastic flute teacher in, in New York. And then I move on to this. This is called a, a breath builder. And I do some exercises on, on that as well. And what that does is that it helps warm up my lungs even before I, I pick up the flute and start making noise. And then I start off by doing long tones. I, I start off just doing the, the low register really, really slowly, just one note at, at a time, starting with a low B, that's the lowest note on the flute, um, just going up one by one, um, all the way up to a stratospherically high E. And then I do a third octave, just I, I practice doing soft attacks on, on the high register because that's another thing that's really challenging to do on the flute. And I brought with me a uh, Canzone. It's uh, Barber, it's from, it's the second movement from Barber's Piano Concerto. And it's just an absolutely gorgeous flute melody. It starts off in, in the low register, so it warms up my low register. It's, a, it's a, this particular Canzone, it's a ranch for flute and piano. So I start off with that. Um, and then towards the end, it, it goes to a high E that you have to play really beautifully and softly. So it just kind of has all ranges in it. And it's a really beautiful, very wistful melody. Uh, so I usually do that. Um, and I also brought arias from Bach cantatas. And I've been looking up translations online and, pl and playing and getting to know some of them, which has been very musically nourishing. Um, I think the hardest thing about playing in the BSO that people might not know uh, for flute players particularly is gauge how to gauge our air. Unlike any other instrument on stage, um, the flute is a tremendous waste in a sense because all other instruments are doing some physical gesture that actually goes into the production of sounds. So if you're if you're bowing, that makes a sound. If you're plucking a string, that makes a sound. Um, you know, if you're um, you know, uh, hitting the chimney, that, that makes a sound. Um, but for wind players, you know, everything from, let's say, you know, the, the oboe, which has, you know, a teeny, teeny, tiny opening, uh, probably the smallest in the orchestra. And then the tuba, which has one of the largest openings, um, in, in the wind section, uh, woodwind and brass. Um, but even so all of the air that you're putting into the instrument actually produces the sound. Whereas with the flute, uh, you know, a lot of what you do is 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 blowing over the instrument. And so a lot of what I do when I practice um, and a lot of what I emphasize with my students is, um, all the time is just how best do you, do you gauge your air? Um, you know, when do you aim it more into the instrument? When, when do you aim it above? How flexible can you be to make quick register changes? And of course, that all changes with the people around you. You know, <laughs> what's it like tuning with them? Uh, how are certain things uh, balancing? And so, or what tempo are you taking? You know, all of those factors change your, your breathing. And in a typical week, we'll start rehearsing a piece on Tuesday. If you're playing in a concerto, maybe on Wednesday for a Thursday performance. So you have very little time to actually rework your air and how, how you're playing something. Um, so when you practice, you, you try to prepare for all eventualities and, you know, how slow might the conductor take this? How fast might he take it? How's that's going to affect my, my airstream? But I always find when I play in the orchestra, it requires far more air than it does somehow at, at home. So you have to adjust really quickly. And, and that's, I, I think that's the hardest thing, at least for, for flute players in, in the Boston Symphony. 
um, the best thing about playing in an orchestra, I would say, is is just the thrill of being around world class musicians. Just the the artistry, the um, the creativity, the subtlety, the the, the passion. Um, there's nothing like sitting in front of a great orchestra, which is why I, I dreamed of playing in an orchestra since age 15, playing Stravinsky's Rite of Spring for the first time. Um, and I think the best thing um, that the audience might not know about is how much we really are a community on stage. There's something about playing in an orchestra. You you have to be a team, and you have to be a team really in the moment because a performance unfolds moment by moment really quickly. And that means you have to make split second decisions without talking to each other. <laughs> you have to communicate non-verbally. Um, and so sometimes, you know, you, you can sense if a colleague uh, might be insecure about, you know, where are we? <laughs> sometimes, you know, just in, in the moment you might, you might tap your knee at the, at the next rehearsal bar or, um, or something, you know, of course the, the conductor communicates a lot of things non-verbally, but musicians communicate a, a lot to, to one another. I'm sure with the strings, with the way you're, you know, you're gesturing and, and, and you're bowing, um, if you're in the front of the section, um, same thing with, with, with wind players, the way we gesture, sometimes if you have to tune something, the way you have to lean into one another, but there's a sense that you, you really all want to pull together, um, you know, in that split second and, and sometimes make, <laughs> make unusual decisions to avoid train wrecks, um, you know, really, really quickly without kind of looking back at what you might have just, just done that, that you, that you didn't like, or, you know, or maybe even making up really quickly for a wrong entrance, um, that actually happens. Um, so that's, uh, part of the excitement of, of, a, of a live performance. You, you, you never know how it's going to go until it unfolds in, in that moment. And I don't think any, experience can quite reproduce that. Um, songs of Comfort. Uh, our music director, Andres Nelsons, is very fond of saying that music is food for the soul. I absolutely agree with that. And one thing that I'd like to recommend that you listen to if, if you have never heard it, there's an unaccompanied choral work that's absolutely gorgeous. It's called Sleep by Eric Whitaker, spelled W-H-I-T-A-C-R-E. And um, it's the the words are absolutely beautiful, and it and it talks about um, actually anxiety, and going going to sleep even in the midst of anxiety, and somehow that ability to go to sleep, bringing you almost in, into um, a, a second world of of hope, and appropriately enough for for this time, sleep was actually recorded. If you look up on YouTube, Eric Whitaker Virtual Choir, it was recorded around the world. Uh, he conducted it with with people in their own homes, um, not even thinking of a pandemic. Uh, people in their own homes recording their own parts to this this choir, and so everyone was singing it at the same time around the world. Uh, it's it's hard to think of a better song of comfort, I think, at this time. But I'd like to play something for you uh, for my own song of comfort for you, uh, BSO audience. Uh, in September 2018, I was fortunate enough to play for a dear friend's wedding and um, unac some movements from unaccompanied Telemann fantasies. And of course, uh, during this time, we're, we're all missing a lot of exciting get togethers, uh, you know, engineering and scientific conferences, worship services, weddings, funerals, and of course, symphony orchestra concerts. I'm, I'm very much missing this at this time. Um, and so I'm gonna play something that I played for her wedding um, and this is, in a sense, more of a song of hope than a song of comfort. It looks forward to the time when we will be getting together again for these uh, joyous in-person occasions. So this is one of the, I'm about to play the Allegro from the Telemann Unaccompanied Fantasy in A major.
Stay safe, everyone.